Hey, what's up? Sixtelio here, trying to be showing you how to water damage repair your iPhone 5. This applies to all models of the iPhone 5, including A1429 or A1428, uh, because they're all built exactly the same without any uh, difference at all, except for the carriers, and pretty much, and uh, the LTE bands it supports. But uh, otherwise, uh, if you water damage uh, your iPhone 5, then this is the tutorial for you. So let me just start off with the tools that you'll need. Uh, one, you'll need uh, 70 to 90 percent alcohol. Um, any rubbing alcohol should do just fine. You can get this at Walmart for about a buck, 50 cents for a bottle. So not too bad there. Um, any decent type of toothbrush, doesn't matter what kind. Um, this is just an old one that I had. Uh, so yeah. Uh, some sort of a Tupperware container or some sort of container that you can uh, submerge the uh, logic board in the alcohol. And um, you will also need a magnetized uh, Phillips screwdriver, a micro Phillips screwdriver, and a, doesn't need to be magnetized, but a Pentelope screwdriver. Just a little five point thing for the two bottom screws. Um, if you do not have a suction cup to get the screen off, you can also use a razor blade, and I'll show you how to do that. I do not have any suction cups nearby, so I'm going to use this, and I'm sure I had to do that. And um, you don't need one of these exactly, but I do recommend having some sort of little spudger like this. Um, it helps you just get little uh, uh, flex cables off the terminals uh, without actually having to you know, try to get them out. And um, also optional is a X-Acto knife, which you know serves the same purpose as the spudger. So, um, before I get into this, this is owned by a, I believe, 13 or 14 year old junior high student. Um, I guess they went swimming with their friends and, uh, well, one thing I'm really confused about is why parents are buying their junior high, uh, aged kids iPhone 5s. Makes no sense, but, you know, that's, this is the consequence of buying your uh, 13 or 14 year old and iPhone 5 this is what happens but let's get right into it so first off you want to make sure your phone is powered off um, do not try the whole rice thing it does not work rice will not fix anything that has to do with water damage all it does is hold your uh, device suspended in all the rice any liquid that drips out drips out but um, while it's sitting there for days or weeks on end um, that gives corrosion chance to build up inside of the phone and eat at the motherboard and eat at little uh, circuits and terminals on the logic board. And it will actually destroy your phone, depending on what type of liquid it is. This one, fortunately, was uh, pool water with no chlorine in it, so this should be just fine. Um, but anyway, down here at the bottom you have two Penelope screwdriver or screws. So you use your Penelope screwdriver and just get that out. We're going to set those off to the side. Now when you set your screws off to the side, um, what I always do, I don't use a stupid paper thing or anything like that to keep track of any of the screws, but rather I just set the screws down in a way that they are inside of the phone. Let's see, and um, also prior to this, you do not want to uh, try and power on your device because you could actually short circuit it. So um, if you don't have a, uh, a suction cup to get the screen off, you can use a razor blade and this is how you do it. Just be really careful that you don't mess up your bezel. Uh, just right here. So what you want to do, you just want to get it right in between there. Just get the best you can in there. Just to the left of the home button. And just lightly lift up. Some force but not too much as you may damage your screen. This is not a recommended way to open your iPhone 5. If you don't have a suction cup nearby, then you gotta do what you gotta do. And just like that, it is up. Just be careful when you lift the screen up, lift it up lightly. And then once you have your iPhone 5 opened, you just simply want to have it in an L shape just like this. This is where your Phillips screwdriver comes in. Now, right here is where your uh, your camera, front assembly, uh, flex cables, your LCD and digitizer cables are located underneath. 
Uh, there are three screws holding this down. We have one uh, non-compatible magnetized screwdriver. So this usually won't act, react to a magnetized screwdriver, but these two will. So we're going to go ahead and take these out first. And uh, kind of sorry if you can't see everything I'm doing in the video. Um, I'm just recording with my iPad mini. But uh, hopefully you get a good idea of how to actually do this. Now, keep in mind you do want to uh, set these screws down exactly as they are in the phone so you don't lose track of them. Now that last screw just kind of, oh hey, you got it, never mind. Sometimes if you have a strong enough magnetized screwdriver, it'll you know actually stick to it. But usually that one doesn't for some reason. Next, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try to get this little plate out. From this side up, just lift up, and you can simply edge it out. It's kind of held with a clip underneath there on that uh, other side. So set that down with those screws. And next, this is where a spudger usually comes in useful, or a uh, plastic pry tool. Simply lift up on your uh, camera uh, mic for an assembly flex. And then your LCD and digitizer, you can just pop up, and your digitizer cable should just you know, come up with your LCD cable. And that is how you remove your front assembly. We're going to set our front assembly off to the side. And now we just have the bare phone. Now I did forget to take the uh, SIM card out. So what I'm going to do for my little SIM card popper. Do all my keys. Now until you actually have to take the motherboard out, you don't really need to take this out. But it's usually recommended to before you start. Set that off to the side where you're not going to lose it because you don't want to lose your SIM card tray or, you know, of course the SIM card. And let's move on. Next, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. The battery is held down by a uh, little shield with two screws holding it down. So we're going to go ahead and take this middle one off first. It is a two-piece shield, actually, which has three screws. And uh, keep in mind, set these screws down, and I, I'm going to just keep reminding you to do this. Just set the screws down in a way that they are inside of the phone. See, when those screws are out, you can simply lightly lift up on that shield, and it should come right off. Next, we're going to go ahead and take that one screw off, right here at the top, on that second shield. Set that down. And now our uh, dock assembly flex and our battery flex is just right there. So you can use either your spudger, I'm going to use the spudger or your uh, X-Acto knife. Pop the battery uh, up just like that. Now, when you get your battery out, you want to be really careful. Because if you puncture your battery, and I've actually done this before, I ended up having to replace the battery for free for customers. But um, just so you avoid the mistake, because iPhone 5 batteries, not everybody has them just lying around like I usually do. But, um, yeah. So when you lift this up, you just want to kind of get a wedge, get something wedged in there that's uh, actually not. I'm going to use my razor blade. I'm going to use the, uh, the flat end of my razor blade and just stick it right in between there. Get a good leverage on that, if I can, that is. Now what you want to keep from doing is lifting up with a point, because if you lift up with a point, you're going to puncture your battery, and your battery is going to you know, start flaming everywhere, and nobody wants that. When you get some decent leverage on there, and you get underneath there, lightly lift up, and the sticky stuff underneath the battery can be kind of a bitch to get off, so just be careful, be gentle with your battery. A new battery shouldn't be more than like five to ten bucks off eBay. If you need a link for a new battery if you punctured it, uh, just let me know. PM me and I'll send you a link for it. Or if you want a gold battery, those are about twelve bucks from Hong Kong or twenty-five from the U.S. Now, once you have your battery out, just so this little tab isn't in the way, what I usually do is set this off and fold it over, and just kind of pat it down right there so it sticks and stays. See, next, we're going to go ahead and lift this little flex cable up, holding your, which is connecting your uh, dock assembly. You just want to lift up just like that, and pull back. 
let's see. Now, it is also recommended to use a flathead screwdriver, which um, if you ordered any kind of kit for any you know, parts for your iPhone or anything, you should usually get a uh, microphobe screwdriver and a little flathead. Let's see if I can get these out with the, uh, the Phillips, which looks like I can. So just like that. Again, set these screws as if they were inside of the phone. So the screws that go on top of these screws, uh, just set them right next to those, and you should be okay. That way you know where they go, where they came from. Now if you're using a uh, Phillips screwdriver to get these out, it can be kind of a bitch, but uh, in the end you end up getting it out. Let's see, there is also a screw located under these two cables. Now be careful that you don't actually rip or damage the uh, terminals connecting these cables because that would be bad. And if you take the terminal off of the motherboard, then I cannot guarantee you'll be able to actually repair that. You might actually have to take it in Apple and get it replaced for 230 bucks. So we're going to go ahead and get the first cable up, just like so. Just go underneath the cable and then lightly lift up. And then the second cable, we're just going to go right under here. And that's up. And that should expose this little screw right here, which is located right next to your uh, SIM tray module. Just going to take that little guy out. Set it as if it was inside of the phone. There's another screw right here next to your little SIM popper. Go ahead and take that out. Again, set it as if it was in the phone. Sorry if uh, me keeping uh, reminding you about this is you know kind of annoying, but yeah, you know, trying to keep reminding you. There is also another uh, hex screw right here, just like these two were right here. So go ahead, and take a flathead or Phillips. If you can manage with the Phillips, then you know do so. If not, then use a uh, flathead. Now this one probably won't re react to your uh, magnetized screwdriver. So once it's actually out, it'll probably fall right in here. And I you know, just tip it over, should be fine. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, lift up our uh, power flex or uh, volume button, uh, mute volume, and uh, little power button flex. It's located right here underneath your LCD terminal. Just go ahead and pop that up and go lift that over to the side. And uh, you should be able to just stick it right there so it's not in the way. Next, we're going to get the little uh, shield holding your flash diffuser in, or your uh, flash LED light thingy. There are two screws holding that down. Again, put these with the other screws as if it was inside of the phone. Next, we can go ahead and lift our little uh, module up. Or no, not module, the little shield and it should expose our uh, LED uh, module. There is another hex screw just right there, so we're going to go and lift that out, or uh, unscrew that. Now when you're actually putting your phone back together, this screw is going to be a bitch for some. Uh, it usually is for me, because it's kind of oddly shaped. You can see that. But then again, put it as if it was inside of the phone, and my knife, or my little razor blade just fell. Okay, now we should be able to uh, lift our camera back, just like so, and same with the uh, little LED flash, just like so. Now, let's see, do, do, do. now there are two screws right here at the top of the uh, bezel, and those are connecting to, forget which antenna that is exactly, actually you know what? No, we don't need to do that, I don't think. Yeah, we do. Yeah, remove these two little screws right here. So I was just uh, trying to remember this real, real quick. Uh, depending on how you're angled, it might be a little bit of a bitch to do, but got to get it out. Right, I'm going to hold it just like this, and I'm going to unscrew it just like that. Again, 
put these down just as they are in the phone. Easy. Okay. Now also, down here, next to your uh, speaker, which is right here, uh, there is a little uh, coaxial cable, which we're going to go ahead and use our razor blade since it's a little bit more finer point. I'm just going to go ahead and lift that up. Just like so. If you uh, saw that, I guess. Let's see. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. We should be able to lift our motherboard out of the phone now. So just go right under here. And it should come out. Now there's one coaxial cable that's right here that I actually almost forgot, so sorry about that. So what you want to do when you get your motherboard out, you want to flip your motherboard over. And if you look right here, I'm going to go ahead and focus in on this. It is just right here. Go ahead and put this little guy out just like that. And there is our motherboard. Now we can set this off to the side. Um, I do not know if any uh, of these parts are actually damaged or not, but we will find that out once we actually test the phone. Now we do not want to uh, do anything with our camera that has to do with alcohol because that can actually ruin the camera. So we're going to unscrew two screws holding that in. Now we're going to set this off to a separate location than the other screws since it's underneath the motherboard. But we're also going to set the camera with it too so we know where it comes from. Just set them down in a way that you remember where they go. And it should just pop off just like that. Actually, going to get these two little cables. By the way, if you uh, mess up either of these cables, they're about two bucks for both off eBay. And uh, just set these cables as if they are in the phone, right next to the other screws. So here is your iPhone 5 motherboard. And also, one thing I did notice is that all of the uh, these little shield plates covering the motherboard um, are actually soldered into the, uh, the actual you know, motherboard. So, actually I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video. You're going to need some air duster. Uh, the reason you'll need air duster is so that you can angle it in a way that you can actually blow out the uh, excess alcohol after you're done uh, you know, soaking it. So this is the part where we uh, get the uh, container and alcohol. Take the container off like that. And we're going to go ahead and stick our motherboard in there. We're just going to pour it on directly onto the motherboard just like so. Just make sure it's submerged. As long as it's submerged, it should be good enough. And also, uh, if you're like me and have a shit ton of cuts all over your hands from you know various other repairs, uh, be kind of careful because this will burn like hell. Alright, now that toothbrush. Go ahead and grab your toothbrush. And uh, just lightly, actually I'm going to go ahead and dip this in alcohol too. Just lightly go over the terminals of your um, logic board. Just like so. Um, I know that you can't reach underneath here with the bristles. So, you know, just kind of got to deal with that. So the only difference between uh, this and the uh, iPhone 4 um, water damage repair video that I did, which I'll actually... Uh, having the video responses as well, or a link to it uh, probably somewhere around here. Um, yeah, the only difference is, is that you cannot take these shields off of the logic board. Anywhere there's a terminal you want to kind of, you know, just get those bristles in there the best you can. Now the reason why you use uh, alcohol to actually clean your logic board um, 
Yes, it is liquid going onto your logic board, but the alcohol doesn't exactly damage your logic board. And the reason you use alcohol instead of something like water or something like that um, is because alcohol dries a hell of a lot quicker than uh, water does. It also kills any type of bacteria um, almost upon contact. It starts eating away immediately. And um, you know, brushing the, the logic board kind of helps with that. I'm not going to get in there. Now, um, I've also been able to repair uh, some iPhone 4S's and some other various uh, different Android phones in about half an hour doing this exact repair. Um, just taking the, the logic board out, cleaning it, uh, blowing it off with air duster, and then um, making sure everything's dry, then putting it back together. Uh, sometimes it's actually worked 100% perfectly without any issue whatsoever. All right, now we're going to go ahead and uh, you know, let that sit in there for a little bit. So that is the end of this video. That is um, just how to disassemble and uh, you know start the process of cleaning your logic board with alcohol. Now, um, I'm, not, I'm just going to end this video now, and I'm going to come back to you with a results video, just like the last one. Um, if this video helped you out at all, um, you know, in the results, I guess, uh, comment, you subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 6 0 If you have any questions about any part of this, any part of this video, oh, and another thing I forgot to mention that you might need is a glass of water, because just like me, I have a dry as shit mouth right now. Anyway. Any part of this video you have questions about, feel free to ask at any point in time. I will answer within the day usually, because uh, I usually check my inbox regularly. But uh, yeah, come on, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at 6 Zero, and see ya. Hey, what's up? 6 Zero here. Today I'm going to be continuing a video on how to repair water damage on your iPhone 5. Um, if you watched the last video on how to disassemble and actually start the process of uh, cleaning your logic board after it's been liquid damaged, uh, this is just a continuation of that video. Now, um, roughly about two minutes ago, uh, and that last video, um, and just so uh, most of you can kind of get a sense of uh, what I'm actually doing, um, when uh, you actually start soaking your uh, logic board in alcohol, you don't want to do it for too long. It doesn't need to be soaking for you know very long at all. Um, as long as you uh, got it uh, pretty decently soaked, brush it off with your toothbrush or you know something else similar, uh, it should be good if it soaks for just a couple minutes because that's all it really needs. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. Go ahead and give it a little bit of a shake. Here and I'm gonna grab my air duster. Ah, shit! I got a bunch of cuts all over my fingers. Alcohol burns. It burns. Ah. Okay. Air duster. Yeah. And uh, you know, don't do the whole upside down thing and you know spray it. Cause yes, we all know it does that. Uh, that's just a waste of it. And these are about five bucks a can from Walmart, so don't waste them. So I don't waste all of it. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> all right. So now the outside of it's relatively dry. There's still liquid or uh, alcohol underneath these little shields, which we cannot take off unless you actually cut them. Which that's up to you if you want to or not, but yeah, you know, I wouldn't. Okay, so we're gonna just angle it so the air duster gets right in there.
by now your motherboard should be fucking cold. Cause oh my god, that shit is cold. <laughs> well, a little watermark fell off. Apple won't know. <laughs> No, uh, Apple geniuses really aren't that much of a genius. They uh, they usually don't notice shit that's missing inside of iPhone 5s, like watermarks. Just the one that's on your LCD, which is, you know, right there. When they pop your SIM card out, that's what they check. So as long as that's white, you should be good. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. So uh, here's the fun part. This is where we get to test our uh, logic board and see how it went. See if we get lucky and get a quick repair. So, uh, let's see. We can go ahead and stick our camera. Oh, actually, hold up. I didn't even see this before. Hmm. Looks like there's a little bit of arcing on the uh, little camera module. Red flag. And this camera might need, need to be replaced too. Then again, we can also uh, clean that off with alcohol, too. But I'm going to put it on anyway, just so we can test that, make sure it works. And we're going to, you know, we're not going to screw anything in. We're just going to connect it just enough so that we can actually test the logic board. We're going to set it down just like that. So take your... Uh, Power flux assembly, hook it up just like so. Do that. Let's hook that up just so we can test the charger port as well. And let's see, where is that battery? There it is. Oh, actually, yeah. just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and hook our LCD digitizer and camera mic front assembly. Push that camera down. Sorry you couldn't see all that, or if you didn't see all that, uh, it was kind of underneath the camera lens. So my bad for that, but um, I'll just go ahead, go ahead and give you a quick overview of what I've actually connected. The uh, power flux assembly, the uh, let's see, the dock assembly, flux cable, the battery, and the uh, front assembly. So let's see if this battery has any charge on it. Just gonna turn that on. Looks like that is a no. Let me go ahead and hook it up to this dock right here. So that is a really good sign. That means it is charging. So what we're going to go ahead and do, uh, let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, part of the video. I'll probably just add it on, uh, add two videos in the one or something like that. So be right back after this is done charging and uh, see you in a sec. Okay, so that uh, iPhone just barely turned on. So, uh, oh shit, I shouldn't drink so much soda. Yeah, it was nasty. Anyway, that uh, iPhone that uh, you know we've been working on has just barely turned on, and um, let's see what its touch response uh, sensitivity is. So it looks like full touch screen works. We get to test the camera. I do not know the passcode, but I can still test the camera. Does it work? Will it work? Please work. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's work. It does not work. <laughs> now the way you can tell it doesn't work is that'll flash for a little bit. So we are going to do a little bit of uh, you know, water damage repair on that little camera and see if maybe we get something else. So we're going to go ahead and slide two power off. But we do have uh, what I do believe is a working phone. Uh, but I don't know the passcode so unfortunately I can't really show you anything. Um, I'm probably going to do a little add-on to this uh, video once the customer comes to pick it up. And, uh, yeah. But anyway, let's get back into it. Oh. 
if you put this on the dock like I did, be careful when you take it off. So, let's go ahead and get back into this. So far, this water damage repair is uh, going just fine. I'm going to go ahead and lift that battery up, take it out, put it off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and lift our front assembly out. Front assembly is out. I'm going to go ahead and lift our power flex assembly out. And our dock assembly. Now I can go ahead and pop this back out. Ugh, motherboard's kind of hot. That could be an issue. Uh, heating up motherboard, yeah, that, that could be a side effect. So kind of be aware of that. And uh, now, we're going to go ahead and go back to the alcohol. And this is just an attempt to actually fix the camera. Get the iPhone 5 assembly out of the way. Where did that toothbrush go? So, rather than actually submerging this and possibly destroying the camera, we're going to go ahead and do this. Go ahead and dip the toothbrush into the alcohol. And do that. Now, um, one thing you definitely want to keep in mind, this is in no way a guaranteed uh, fix for liquid damage devices at all. Um, liquid damage, this iPhone could actually, you know, be extremely defective once it's actually finished. But the fact that I, it actually turned on, um, the customer actually came in and said all it did, uh, she was able to show the charging thing, but she had it on for about two days and it never turned on. So the fact that it turned on, showed the lock screen, and the touch screen is fully uh, functional is actually a huge step. And then again, I'm just going off what the customer said. But as far as I know, we uh, made progress on this logic board. And yeah, so let's go ahead. Almost had an air duster, need to go pick some more up tomorrow. Now, um, some of this uh, arcing, it may not actually be arcing, but rather than it may just be corrosion buildup. So, for that, what you want to do, take a razor blade and just lightly go over it. Um, I'll try to get my lamp over this so you can see it a little bit better. Slightly go over it so you kind of scratch it out. And if you go too hard, you're actually gonna, you know, damage these uh, solder points. And if these uh, solder points are, you know, cut too deeply, then uh, they're not gonna actually work properly, and you may actually have to replace the whole terminal. Then again, um, I may end up offering to replace the uh, camera at a discount since they're doing a water damage repair. Which, uh, by the way, this exact repair at my store, uh, we charge 25 bucks for, for those of you who are wondering. I'll um, also uh, put that in the description as well for you. Clean off a little bit. Okay, let's see if we maybe save the camera. Maybe. You know what? 
Let's go ahead and do this one too while we're at it because there is a little bit of uh, corrosion on that actual terminal and I don't know if this is actually going to fix it because this uh, actually looks pretty bad just right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and focus in right on that so you can see what I'm talking about. That does not look good and what I'm talking about is right there. So unless you uh, be able to actually replace this little terminal um, this actually may be permanently damaged. But um, if it's just uh, you know minor corrosion or something like that, you can just lightly go over the uh, the terminal little uh, solder points. alcohol left on this so I'm just going to kind of just go just like that I'm going to go ahead and blow that out running out air duster oh no <laughs> uh, Okay, let's go ahead and connect that battery again. And connect the front assembly. camera does not work so I'm going to go ahead and check and see how much those cameras actually run so give me just a sec and I will get you an answer for that Let's see eBay iPhone 5 camera flex A lot of front cameras. There's the back camera. So 1590. It's the first price I'm seeing. And a lot of front cameras. 1399 bidding. What, what the fuck would I bid on that? So you're looking at about 15 bucks. Uh, 14 bucks are best offer. It looks like. 25 for front and back. Ooh, deal. <laughs> 17 bucks and um, also the FCP or FPC plug uh, that little terminal for the uh, where the camera connects to you can get that for eight bucks um, if you're confident enough to actually you know put a new one on your motherboard great go for it if not then uh, well maybe take your chances of putting this phone back together and uh, warranting it out for a brand new one for free uh, just make sure you replace your uh, watermarks by the way. But anyway, uh, yeah. So let's just go ahead and get this phone put back together. Let's go ahead and turn it off. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through step by step of how to actually reassemble your iPhone. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect our battery. Take that out. Put out the side. Go ahead, take these little guys out. Okay, so you 
can just leave your motherboard in there just like so. Actually, no, never mind. Don't listen to me on that. Take your motherboard out. Reason why? Get this little guy back in there. Don't forget the flex cable or the coaxial cable fail. <laughs> Yeah, these aren't really hard to actually put back on. Um, if you uh, actually ruin the little circle thingy right there where the coaxial cable connects to, um, say like it's broken or something like that, you can actually just bend it back into place and then hook it on and it'll work just fine. Unless of course the actual uh, flux, or the coaxial cable terminal uh, broke off of your uh, logic board, then you're kind of fucked and there's nothing you can do about it. Why am I having such a hard time connecting this stupid thing? Okay. Go ahead and put that power button flex down. And I'm going to swing this over and just lay it down just like so. Put your camera down. And we're going to go ahead and proceed to put this bitch together. So the first screw I'm actually going to put in is the one right next to the uh, little sim popper. It really doesn't actually matter which order you put these in, just as long as you put the screws where they go. So just do that. Why isn't it screwing in? Hmm. Confusing. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Let's see what I did. One of the screws got knocked over to the wrong part. Is this the right one? Yeah. Hmm. Must have been a stray screw then. It was just sitting there. And I put the uh, corresponding screw that's uh, right next to the uh, SIM slot, just right there. Next, I'm going to go ahead and proceed to put the uh, hex screws in there. You can do so with a Phillips screwdriver. Now, uh, these hex screws don't exactly matter what order you put them in, just as long as you put them back where they came from. Now, uh, this one that goes right here, uh, you're going to have to just kind of drop it in there, and then kind of guide it over to where it needs to go. Now, get the fuck back over there. That's right, not a magnetized screw, you're my bitch today. Well, every other day that I work on iPhone 5s, I guess. Now this one can be a little bit of a bitch. You might spend a little bit of time uh, actually getting it in there. But it looks like it's going in just fine. Now this one goes right next to your camera. So once you got your camera down, just go ahead and put that down. And uh, let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and put these uh, top two screws in. Now, when assembling your iPhone 5, it doesn't exactly matter what order you actually put it back together in exactly. Uh, some parts you kind of want to do, but other parts don't exactly matter as much. Just as long as you put the screws back where they go. And if you laid your screws out uh, corresponding to where they go in the phone, this will be much easier for you. get rid of this little watermark so just in case they do decide to take it to an Apple store uh, they'll probably get the average dumbass Apple genius who really knows nothing about Apple products or how they're built or what to look for and uh, you know, they'll have a better chance of getting a brand new iPhone 
or if you uh, have you know brand new watermarks to put in this in your iPhone 5 uh, do that it's better that way so we're going to go ahead and put this down our little uh, power flux assembly don't forget these cables and they're just a uh, coaxial cable so I just set them down they're usually just stuck together just like this so you shouldn't have to worry about you know worrying where they go or how to place them because they just kind of go where they go just like that now we can go ahead and put our uh, dock flux right there and we can go ahead and put the battery in actually you know what let's go ahead and put the uh, this little shield in first Somehow I find it easier to just do that. Now, sorry if you can't really see everything I'm doing, um, but hopefully me explaining everything step by step is kind of helping. Fuck you. Go in. <laughs> Don't make me go a 13 year old virgin on your ass, and because I'm not gonna stop till I get that shit in. <laughs> and I'm also I've seen on some of my uh, video comments that some of you are offended by my foul language that I constantly use throughout all of my videos, just about. But uh, that is just me, and uh, I cuss a hell of a lot. So if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry, but that's just my personality. So we're going to go ahead and put this... Uh, oh, come the fuck on, really? I'm going to go ahead and put this battery in. Now, when you put it in, go ahead and put it towards the motherboard first. That way you can lay it down. It just makes it easier. I'm just going to flatten it down because it might have gotten bent when you took it out before the way I did but as long as you didn't puncture it should be just fine why is this not going in there we go now we're going to go ahead and put uh, your uh, top little shield on first and we're going to do that one little screw that corresponds to that Now you can just go ahead and hold the little plate over the hole so you can line it up. Then we're going to take the bottom plate and put it over that plate just like so. You can see that. Now, um, if your screws got moved around or something like that, the way you can tell where the, which uh, screw the middle one is, uh, if you look at this screw right here, it has kind of a curve. Uh, that kind of goes along with the little uh, bowl shape in the little indent in the middle. So that's kind of how you can tell that screw goes there. Now I didn't tighten it down all the way just so I can kind of move the shield around. That way I can get this last little screw in there a lot easier. Now I'll go ahead and tighten down the middle one. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that one little other screw was just a stray screw that I didn't know where it came from. So, yeah. Alright. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to install our front assembly. Digitizer first, LCD second, and camera front assembly first. which can sometimes be a bitch. Now we're gonna, when you uh, put the shield back in, this is the last step. You're going to want to put these little uh, these little hooks. Uh, I'll just show you how, you how I do it. Put them along the motherboard just like so. And just make sure it's flat and uh, you know kind of stable. 
We're going to put these uh, two screws in first. This one is not magnetized. It is the last screw we're going to put in before we you know, put the phone all back together. Just kind of lining that up so I can get it in there. Okay, last but not least, this stupid little screw right here, which is no longer responding to my little magnet thingy. So, what I usually do is I just kind of drop it on there, and then I kind of just push it over and then screw it in. What was that? That was a key that I don't know what that goes to, but it got stuck to my arm. So just kind of maneuver that little screw however you can, and then just, you know, tighten it down. Um, next, just for warranty purposes, I usually just take, like, any kind of cloth and just kind of, you know, wipe down any shield or anything inside the motherboard. That way it doesn't look like it's ever been opened. Now this doesn't mean I'm actually encouraging warranty fraud, but you can use this however you like. It's not technically a warranty fraud, you're just trying to fix your shit. You know, trying to pull some shit on Apple other than... Well, I guess you are. Uh, saying it's not water damaged. I mean, hey, watermark's not white, so... Hey, what's up? Go ahead, wipe down that LCD, give it a little blow. And when you put this assembly back down, you're going to want to put it uh, you know, top first. Go ahead and push it down, push it up, and just kind of ease it in there. Be careful as you don't, as to not uh, you know, bend your LCD or anything like that. Because uh, if you do that, well, you're going to be paying about 160 bucks for a whole brand new front assembly. And so let's go ahead and put our SIM card in. I'm going to put these pinup screws in. And I'm going to show you how you can actually test uh, multiple functions from just the lock screen. So, obviously, touch sensitivity fully works. Well, for the most part. I think I got a glitch there. Okay. Now, we're going to go and test the vibrator. Vibrator works just fine. Hmm. Yep, I think the battery just died. Yeah. It was only on six percent, which um, I've had. I've actually had my personal iPhone 5 shut off around like 17%. Um, known battery issue with all iPhone 5s, or the, a lot of them anyway, mine being included. But then again, obviously, mine is uh, yeah, heavily out of warranty. But then again, yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Okay. So that seems to work just fine. Uh, it's getting full. Well, I had full bars, but uh, two bars of LTE. Hey, just like T-Mobile. <laughs> um, let's see if the camera does anything different this time. Uh, 
Oh, okay, that was a fail. So, uh, yeah, the home button seems to work just fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test the proximity sensor real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and call 112. Proximity sensor does not seem to be working, but then again, I mean, it's only so much. Notifications seem to be working. Let's go ahead and test these uh, volume buttons. Volume button seems to work just fine. Power button seems to work just fine. She's getting text just fine. And, uh. Hmm. So, minus that, uh, that main camera. Oh, fuck you. I'm just gonna turn this off. So, minus uh, the proximity sensor and the back camera, this is a mostly successful water damage repair. Uh, so yeah. But once I actually get a, uh, get the passcode for this, get it unlocked so I can show you all the features such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, possibly front camera, if I can get into it, uh, then I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, just a little update video. But uh, otherwise, if this video helped you out at all, helped you out at all this is where that water comes in handy that I was talking about earlier. If this video helped you out at all, uh, comment, rate, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 6 0 And uh, if you have any questions whatsoever about any point of you know the series of uh, water damage repair videos, if you're having an issue and you're not sure what to do and uh, you're kind of afraid to go forward, uh, feel free to ask me anytime at all. Uh, PM me, comment in the box below. Just let me know what your question is. All I have is answers. Um, I'm more than willing to help all the time. Again, uh, we also do, uh, in my store, which is Sell Again at the Layton Hills Mall in Layton City, Utah, we do this exact repair for about 25 bucks for the full service. Um, it can take, you know, as long as this video took, or the series of videos actually took, or it could take up to two to three days. It just depends. Uh, but yeah. But then again, this exact uh, service is not guaranteed at all because it is you know, liquid damage. Uh, there are actually a few uh, types of liquid that uh, I've seen the absolute worst effects from within about a day. Jello is at the top. Jello is probably the worst I've ever seen. Uh, within hours it was heavily corroded and you know that, that film that I saw a few years ago was just completely done. It was terrible. Second, milk. Within one day's time, it was heavily corroded inside, and there was a hell of a lot of buildup inside of the phone. And the third one, I believe, what was it? It was either salt water or it was, it was chlorine slash other type of chemical. Or no, maybe, I think it was uh, probably mop bucket water with a bunch of different types of chemicals in it. But uh, actually, the cleanest types of water you can drop it in is sink water, toilet water, or any type of you know pure liquid or alcohol. If you drop it in alcohol, you should be fine. Uh, this whole front assembly is surprisingly not affected at all. I haven't seen any uh, defects in the LCD, so you know this person got pretty lucky. But anyway, comment, rate, really subscribe, follow me on Twitter at six tally zero, um, and yeah. Domani quando morirai, forse in te non mi preoccuperei.